Watson. We are so glad that you have decided to take this course. I know you're going to think this is one of the best decisions you've made for your career. I think about when I first started out as an administrator, I really wish I'd had a course like this and, and this information because a lot of times I had to sort of learn as I was going along and that's really not the best way to do it. You'll find that the, many of the things here as we start, many of the, the values we talk about are things that you already have. You have these values, but you're going to be learning about theories, and some specific skills, many things that will make you marketable, ways that you can compete for the administrative job that you would like to have. And as we talk about these specific skills, I'm going to ask my colleague, Dr. Rick Hofer, to come and talk to you about some of those. Hi, I'm Dr. Rick Hofer. I want to welcome you to this course, just as Larry did. I think we're, we're both firm believers in what we've put together, and we believe that it's going to help you move ahead in your career. It's going to give you skills. It's going to give you confidence so that you can apply for those administrative jobs. So welcome and congratulations. You've made a really good choice. So what is it that we're actually going to talk about in this course, though? I know you must be wondering that. There are 14 topics that we cover. The first topic that we talk about is values and ethics. These are very important. These are what set you apart from many of the competitors for the administrative jobs that you may be going for. So don't short shrift this. This is important that you're able to articulate what your personal values are and what the ethics are that will guide you when you become an administrator and a manager. The second topic that we talk about are theories. Now I know theory gets a bad rap, but imagine that you're in a job interview and this is a, a common question you might receive. Well, I know you're applying for this CEO job or this manager job. Can you tell us a little bit about your theory of management? This is a bad time to have that deer in the headlights look. So we cover different theories and more importantly not just from an academic perspective, but from a perspective of how do these impact people when you're their manager? How do these impact people when you're the one being managed? So your theory of management is something that's more important than you might have ever considered. The third topic that we look at is leadership. Leadership has perhaps thousands of books and tens of thousands of journal articles about it. But what does all that mean on a daily basis? These are the kind of skills that you're going to learn when you go through this certificate program. So that's topic number three. The fourth topic that we look at is communication. Obviously, we communicate every day in very many different contexts. But when you're an administrator, your communication style is even more important than it was before. So we give you some specific skills, techniques, and ideas for how to communicate effectively so that you're able to manage other people, you're able to get the agency goals implemented while you're working through those other people. So together, leadership and communication make a nice little package that you'll want to learn how to work together. Now let me turn back over to Larry so he can talk about the next few topics. The next few topics are some of the most important that we'll cover in the course for you as a potential new administrator. And these have to do with planning and with program evaluation and logic models. And those all work together in many ways. When we talk about planning, many times we're talking about strategic planning with boards or your own planning internally for how you'll work uh, the programs in, in your agency. So there's a whole section on planning and there's some really good tools there like the SWOT uh, evaluation that you'll learn to use how to uh, assess an organization. The logic model is a key skill that, that you will need and when you're ready to start interviewing for a job if you can talk about that you know how to do a logic model this will take you a long way because this shows that you know how to look at the whole big picture. That you know everything about the program from the way it's planned to its goals, objectives, the mission, how it will be evaluated, how that it will make a difference in people's lives. 
which really leads to program evaluation, and that's the big question. You'll learn this is that in program evaluation, the question is, so what? So we did all of these services, and so what? And the so what is, how did we make a difference in people's lives? And that's what you want to be able to say. You'll need that for being able to compete for funding. You'll need that to be able to compete in the community to say we have the best services in this community. And so it's very important this whole section works together in a way that says we know what we're doing and we can show positive outcomes for our work. The next one is budgeting and finance, and this is one that many people just freeze up on for some reason. I always say that I knew so many brilliant social workers in my career, and you put a budget in front of them or a financial statement, and it's like, freeze up. It's like Dick and Jane in the first grade. They don't know what to do. Well, a lot of that's just not taking the time to study and to understand what budgeting is. And you'll learn that. You'll learn what are the major kind of uh, financial uh, reports that are important. You'll learn how to present those. And you'll learn what the process is of budgeting for your organization. And I'm going to let Dr. Hofer come back and talk to you some about human resources, boards, and board development. Human resources. Sometimes that's the department in an organization that gets a bad rap for just being a bunch of bureaucratic paper pushers. But in reality, the core of human resources and what you're going to learn is how do you know the right person for the job that you have in hand. If you hire the wrong person, you're going to have significant negative repercussions. Human resources is also one of the topic areas that has the most legalities associated with it. The EEOC, other government agencies, uh, regulate the hiring, the firing, uh, those kind of processes. And if you foul up there, your agency is going to be uh, troubled by your performance. So this is uh, such an important chapter or an important topic because of the legalities that are associated with it. This part of the certificate program allows you to know where the mines are and how to avoid them. It also helps you get the right person in the job so that your agency works well. A topic that is so important for nonprofits is boards. Every nonprofit has a board of directors, which is technically in charge and the owner of the organization. So you as an administrator, a manager, a CEO, you need to know how they're supposed to operate, how they can operate, and how to help the board members on board uh, and be potentially helpful to you as the CEO. You're not going to learn how to have a tension-free relationship with your board because that really shouldn't be. There should always be a little bit of tension as you'll find out. The next topic that we cover is fund development. Fund development essentially has a lot to do with relationships, particularly when you're dealing with individual donors. Now we may think about grant writing as the, the biggest part of any organization, but statistically speaking, individuals give a whole lot more to nonprofits than uh, grants are given. So this is such an important topic for CEOs and managers to know how to relate to potential donors, how to thank donors, and how to grow the donor relationship. So we'll cover that in this course. Let me turn it back to Larry. He'll cover the final three topics that we have in this certificate program. The last three topics in the course are marketing, persuasion, and advocacy. And for some reason, many times in uh, social services, we think marketing is a, a bad word. We have this belief that if we just provide good services, they'll come to us. I can remember somebody saying that to me one time in a staff meeting. Isn't it just enough that we provide good services? And I said, no, it's not enough. And you'll read that case example in, in your materials. Because it's really important for us to go out and to be able to market our services, to be aware of price, to be aware of place, to be aware of our product, 
So there are many different aspects to marketing. Marketing is not advertising, as you'll learn, but marketing is how we present ourselves to the community, to all of our constituencies and all of our stakeholders. The next two really go together uh, very closely, persuasion and advocacy. And I'll, I'll, I'll brag on my colleague Rick here just a little bit. He is one of the foremost experts in advocacy. He has written books on the subject. He has lectured all over the world on advocacy. So it's going to be a, really a treat for you to be able to study with him in this important aspect. One of the things you'll find in the conclusion we talk about, one of the joys of being an administrator, and one of the things we discovered in our research was that one of the greatest things that brought people joy was being an advocate. And just being advocates for their clients, advocates for other people coming up into the profession. So we think you will really uh, enjoy this session. Um, many of you I know have a burning desire to, uh, for a more just society to make a difference in this world and you'll learn some new skills here about how to, how to do that. So those are the 14 topics that we'll cover and that you'll learn skills in each and every one of those. Won't it be great when you get to the end then and you'll say, look at all that I've learned. Look what I can do now that I wasn't able to do before. I have confidence in my ability to successfully apply for jobs at a higher pay level, more responsibility, and more influence over the course of not only the lives of clients, but the lives of your co-workers. Larry and I did a study that was published and it said that the joy of administration consists of being able to advocate for your clients, for your other colleagues as they, as they move forward in their career. It also is related to mentoring. People feel a great sense of joy from mentoring others and seeing them develop. Being an administrator is not a selfish thing at all. Yes, you get paid more, but the real joy of it comes from how you interact with other people and help them in their careers. In essence, most people get into the field of social work or human services more broadly because they want to make a difference. It's important to realize that as a manager, as an administrator, you're able to make an even larger difference. I like to talk to my students and say, yes, social workers are heroes. But when you become a manager or an administrator, you become a superhero because you're able to communicate, you're able to influence things at a larger level. You kind of supersize your own influence by taking the steps that you're taking now. So Larry and I both want to congratulate you again for buying this certificate program. It's going to take some diligence. It's going to take work on your part. Nothing good ever comes easy but we know that we're providing you the tools that you will be able to turn in to a better, more fruitful, and more joyful career. And we're happy we have joy in helping you be more joyful in your career.